Hey, Mr. Pond Boss, tell me what to do to make all my luck or late dreams come true. Hello, everybody. Bob Lust, the Pond Boss, coming at you live this Wednesday. It's kind of a stormy day here. How many times have I said that? Here's Jason Nepstad. I can't imagine him being there. Dick Taber, woohoo! Glad to see you guys. Got a pretty cool show lined up for you guys tonight. Gonna have a guest. We're going to have, if I can figure it out, it took us about four or five tries this afternoon to get it. But uh, there's Mike Rivers, Jacob West. There's Frank Jones, who's gonna be our guest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invite Frank to join us right now. And so stand by with me here, guys. Here we go. We're looking for Frank on my little list here. Frank, where are you? There he is right there. And for some reason, it isn't let me ask. Oh my gosh. That's weird. Okay. Well, Frank, we did it earlier. I don't know what we're going to have to do, but we got to figure this out, buddy. It shows you It shows you looking here. I'll tell you what, Frank, see if you can ask me to join. See if you can ask me to join because I'm trying to invite you and I'm not doing anything different than we did earlier in the day. So Frank is with uh, Freedom Electric Marine and what we're going to do our best to do is get him on here so we can talk about choosing the right boat for your ponds and lakes. So I'm trying to get Frank on here. I don't know what we're doing different. We, we played with it during the afternoon, finally got him on, and I'm not going to give up until we get him on. So Frank, I hope you're asking me from your phone like you did earlier. Whatever you did earlier, do it again. And let's see what happens here. Frank disappeared, so now we're gonna wait till he comes back. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get this party started, unless you guys know what's going on here. So, uh, you know what I do here. I like to figure out if, how I can see it on my laptop so I can see the questions a lot easier. So, I know it's here, and we're gonna talk about boats. Yep, so now I need to kind of refresh my page. I'm check the internet connection so I know it's going pretty fast. So we should be able to broadcast and talking about boats. So how do you know what boat to choose for your pond? Now I gotta tell you, there's a lot of times that I will hope, there it is right there. Here we go, I found it. Now we go, that's it, yep, here we go. Now I can see you guys. There's Frank James again, so let me try it again here, Frank. Let's do it again here. All right, let's see if I can invite you, Frank. Come on, holy cow. Frank Jones, I'm looking for Frank Jones. I see Frank James. Come on, Frank Jones, try it again, buddy. James Sewell from Forney, Eric Avery. Frank Jones, try now, there he is right there. Okay, Jim Morgan, I see you, buddy. I'm trying to get Frank Jones on here with us. <laughs> This technology wears me out sometimes. I need somebody about 12 to help me figure it out. It is not allowing me to do it. <laughs> Never fails. Never fails. Well, tell you what, we're gonna try it again here. There's Chris Chavetta, Keith Mowdy. Frank Jones, I got you on the phone. See John Wilson? Okay. I'm trying to invite you, Frank, I promise you. I'm touching, the, I'm touching the screen of this phone right here, which is what I do every single time, and now it's not letting me do it. Huh. Well, pooey, because that's, that's a pretty cool thing here. Let's see here, let me see here, Frank. Well, I don't know what to do. Maybe if the girls are watching, they can help talk through it here. Karen Wisher and Leanne. Okay, well, Frank, I don't know what's going on. Let me try something different here. Don't run off, guys. Be right, be hanging there with me. Well, Frank, I don't know what is going on. And I don't know what's not working. Well, you know what? I can talk about it. Frank, I tell you what let's do. 
Why don't you call? Tell you what, why don't you call my cell number? You've got it. And then let me answer the phone and then we'll start talking and let's see if that goes out over the broadcast. Let's try that. That way we can talk. So call my cell number right quick and then let's see if we can talk about it for a minute. Here we're five minutes in and we ain't done nothing yet. There's Elmo Gym Liner. Holy cow. We got a pretty good we gotta get we gotta get this audience going, Frank. We got to. And I have no idea why we're not. So why don't you call me on my cell number and I'll answer it. And then somebody out there, as y'all are listening, tell me if you can hear Frank talking, because I can answer his call on my cell phone where I'm broadcasting from, and then if the phone is picking up his audio, then we can have a conversation and still talk about what he wants to talk about. So, Frank, give me a call on my cell phone. In the meantime, since the topic tonight is boats, I've written several articles on that over the last number of years for Pond Boss, and what we're gonna talk about with Frank, and I don't wanna take away his, uh, it's another my mama used to say, and I still kinda figured you know that that's just kind of the way things go so so now we're going to have frank do what jason nipstadt suggested close out his facebook app and then come back and when i see him back on then i'm going to invite him to come to come in so in the meantime there's jim liner saying he's used twin trollers for 10 years and love them he needs two more well i bet y'all know where you can get them okay so now fellas just talking about boats while well, while we're trying to get Frank on, if you want to learn more about some different boats, go to the Palm Boss Resource Guide because we've got several. We vet our advertisers very strongly, you know, so we can uh, we can really, really have good quality products out there. And so uh, there's several of them. We've got Pontini pontoon boats, and really, what's cool is there's Hotwoods pontoon boats, Pontini pontoon boats. They're located both in Nebraska, and if you go to the Palm Boss um, website resource guide you can learn a little bit more about those boats Ultra Skip is a new advertiser they're located in Gainesville Texas they got some really cool stuff so what do you do all right now there's Frank he's back so let me see if I can invite him in Frank I have no idea what's going on but I tell you what here's what I want you to do I can't get it to work and I have no idea why so now it's not allowing me to invite you for whatever crazy reason it is. So let's do this. I'm gonna start telling them about your products and what you do, and then if you will type it, let's see here. Zach Russell, believe it or not, Bob, my dad builds the Pontinis. Really, I had no idea, Zach, that's pretty cool. So what you do, i tell you what you do, Frank Jones, is why don't you put in a link in the comment section Put in how to find you, um, where to, how to call you, and whatever information you want to add so uh, uh, people can know more about it. But I'm, I'm going to tell you a little story. I was at Ray Scott's place probably, I bet, eight years ago, nine years ago, and he had this neat-looking little compact molded boat sitting beside his dock. But it, it didn't have a motor on it. It had a, kind of a transom in the back. It had two seats. And I imagine it was probably 10 or 12 feet long. It wasn't real big. And uh, um, Don Watts was there. So Don says, hey, let's go fishing. And there was a tracker boat on the other side of the dock. So I started to go get in the tracker boat. And Don says, no, 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 we're taking this boat. And I said, dude, I mean, I weigh 280 pounds. I am not going to step into that boat. It's too little. He says, no, no, don't worry about it. He says, I'm big too. This boat is more stable than you can possibly believe. And then I watched him step on the edge of that boat, on the edge of the boat, and it moved about that much. That was it. And then he stepped on in, got in it, and it, it, I expected it to go like that. It did not do that. And so I cautiously got on there with him, and then there are two foot pedals. So you put your foot on the pedals, and under the hull of the boat are two trolling motors. And it's called the twin troller. And there's stainless steel cages that protect the propellers under the hull of the boat and they're about, oh, I don't know, halfway, they're underneath it somewhere. And the foot pedals, if you push push down with your foot, you'll go forward. If you push back, you go backwards. So you can spin those boats around in a circle. They're totally mobile. They're perfect, 
perfect for a small pond. Or even, I mean, and Ray's Lake is 55 acres. So we fished all day long on one 12 volt marine battery. We probably fished six hours or seven hours. Came in once for lunch, didn't plug it in. And that boat, I fell in love with it and uh, we got one and uh at the house and we love it. i gotta get some new pedals for it i, I left them I, I left it out in the weather and they flooded and ruined the pedal so i gotta get some new pedals for it one of these days let me see jason nimstead says i was going to order a second trolling motor for the back of my bass boat in hopes of doubling my speed since we're electric only lake and i was told it would do nothing to change in my speed i think that's probably right now frank can answer that now, Frank Jones is the inventor. He's got, I think they've sold over 3,000 of these boats in the last eight or 10 or 12 years. And he's bumped up his marketing to get this product out in front of more people. So if we're gonna talk about what kind of boat to choose, what you gotta figure out is why do you want a boat? Uh, one thing I remember is, is I had this gentleman call me. Golly, this was probably 15 years ago. And uh, his ranch manager called me, actually, is what happened. He said that, uh, his, uh, that the ranch owner was 84 years old. He loved to catch big bluegill. And he wanted me to help him grow some big bluegill really fast. <laughs> so we started a feeding program where we were feeding their existing bluegill, stocked some copper-nosed bluegill, the biggest ones I could find, which were about four inches long. But we set up a series of feeders about 50 yards apart. And we set these feeders to go off in five minute increments, twice a day for a while, then three times a day during the peak part of the year. And those bluegill grew from four inches up to seven and a half inches in seven months. And existing bluegills went from six to eight inches up to nine, nine and a half inches in that same span of time. So he had enough bluegills that were big enough he wanted to go fishing, but he was real wary of climbing into a John boat. Now I grew up with a John boat. A 10-foot John boat when I was a kid and weighed a buck 40 or whatever it was back then. Uh, and holy cow, you know, I was pretty agile, unlike now. And I would get up and down the river with a pole, with a big gig on the end of it. Well, if you can imagine somebody 80-something trying to get to a John boat that's not real stable. Well, there's a guy over here near Lake Texoma that builds air boats. But he'll also con uh, custom build pontoon boats. So I gave that guy a call and went and met with him and told him what the deal was and what he what, what this landowner wanted to do and the ranch manager wanted to, to build a boat that would be level with the dock with a wide base where he could take a chair, a comfortable chair, in the middle of the boat on a swivel and sit there while somebody else drove him around bluegill fishing. And it was perfect. It was custom made. It was outstanding. Frank says... We have just redesigned our website so you can learn all about the twin trailer. There you go, Freedom Electric Marine. Yep, and uh, Troy Todd's asking, do you have a, Frank, do you have a business Facebook page? Um, Jason Nipstad's talking about him in Coda. Jim Morgan, we had Frank and the twin trailers at Richmond Mill Lake chasing big bluegill. Yes, you did, and I was there part of the time for that. So, the, I think what you gotta do is you gotta ask yourself, why do I want a boat? What am I gonna do with it? Are you gonna have kids in it? Are you going to, uh, Fish by yourself, you may want a kayak. You know, you may want a canoe. Um, you may want a small pontoon boat. You may want a full bore bass fishing boat. So what you gotta figure out is what's the mission. Now, Jim Morgan's on here, and Jim, if you wanna know more about Jim Morgan, well, you're gonna find out a little bit about it, about him with uh, Kingfisher. Go to kingfishersociety.com Check out Kingfisher Society because that's the home of some bluegill like Bruce Candela was talking about with me two weeks ago. That's the lake where we grew some bluegill that people have caught that have exceeded uh, three pounds. Now that's an exception. There's not been many of those, five or six maybe out of that 125 acres, but there's been hundreds, probably thousands of bluegill caught that are two pounds. And Jim's choice is electric motors. So when when we started working with Richmond Mill Lake, twin trollers, we didn't know about them. They were probably young and new back then. That was like 2005 or six or seven, somewhere like that. And so we, uh, we started talking with Ray Scott. We started talking with some other people. And Ray actually helped us get some Triton boats that we outfitted with some Ray electric motors. 
You know, now the thing about those boats is they're heavy duty. You can carry four people in them. You can get up and down the lake pretty quick with these big heavy duty. Now you got, I think that, I think each one of those boats has got four batteries in it. If you haven't priced marine batteries, that's a consideration. If you got four of them and you got to replace four batteries at 120 bucks a piece or whatever it is, you know, but we've gotten really good mileage and usage out of those uh, Ray motors. So that's a choice. And, you know, we've, we have fished four people out of those boats before, more comfortably two people and a captain. So if you're going to be guiding people, you want a bigger boat. Now, some of the pontoon boats, I'll tell you this, if my wife goes with me to a private lake and she sees a pontoon boat that, with a shade over it, that's what she wants to do. She would much rather be in a 30-acre lake on a 24-foot uh, pontoon boat with a bimini top a bottle of wine, cheese and crackers, but grapes, but she's also really competitive and she loves to fish. So uh, that's, she would, she would much rather go out with the girls, four or five women on a pontoon boat, more like a party barge. So you got to figure out, and also I think your lake plays a role. If your lake is got a lot of shallow water, has a lot of shallow water in it, then you want a boat that'll run shallow. Uh, I was going down the road the other day now here in North Texas, and you don't usually see swamp boats around here, but I saw a boat that I bet you didn't draft three inches deep and had a Go Devil motor on the back. That guy's going to be running through some shallow, shallow water. I see those boats running crawfish traps on crawfish farms. You know, but they're usually, you got to figure out the deal. So here's Jim, let's see here, uh, just Justin Shank checking in from California. Jason Nepstad, he's trying to put together a company outing at Richmond Mill. There you go. And here, Jim, Jim's right there for you, Jason. Frank Jones, the folks at Richmond Mill are fantastic folks, and the lake is a fabulous boy. How we got, we got a love fest going on here. <laughs> All right, Frank's boats are awesome. Get in those little places where the fish are. You know what? That's exactly right. That's one of my favorite things about the twin troller. And we could probably say the same thing about the Pontini and the hot woods boats. They're small, they're compact, they draft shallow. Now, one of the things I love, I love about uh, the twin troller is with the um, motors under the hull, they don't stick out below the bottom of the boat. And with those protective cages, you can run over stuff. Now, you don't like to do that, you know, but you can get up in some really, really shallow water, especially in the spring and the fall where the, where the fish are hanging out and get a lot closer, and they're real stealthy too. That's something about these electric boats. They're very stealthy. You can get in there. Let's see, there's Ed Brewer from uh, South Cackalack. Uh, Frank is telling us if you'd like to watch some videos to check out his YouTube channel, The Twin Trawler, which is a good idea. There's Rusty Hart. Hi, Rusty, good to see you, buddy. Now guys, you know, you know the drill here. I'm gonna scroll back through here because I haven't been looking at the questions. And uh, while I'm doing that, you guys be sure, hashtag Pond Boss Magazine in the comment section, click like, share this video to your page right now. Do that, hit share. And if, you, if you're administering any other websites that are appropriate for this or any other Facebook pages, share to those Facebook pages if you don't mind because we want to spread the word. You know, Pond Boss's mission in life is to help you and everybody we can find to be better stewards of your land and water. So our mission is to provide good, solid information that you can use for the betterment of your ponds and lakes. Now, this is the July-August issue of the magazine. It's out. It's in the mail stream. Most people have it that are subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, you can go to pondboss.com, resource guide, or there's a little icon there. You can click to subscribe. You can subscribe online. 35 bucks a year. And I promise you, every issue's got a nugget or two or 10 that you can use. So please subscribe to Pond Boss. It's well worth it, I promise you. And plus, all of our advertisers are in there. Now, we also have a resource guide. We got a printed copy, or we've got this online. <clears throat> and you can go look up all these different boat companies I've been telling you about in our resource guide <clears throat> so you can learn more about about that stuff so please do that oh by the way and if you will if you will do hashtag pond boss magazine and click like and share this to your pages 
that's going to make you eligible for a drawing for a Pawn Boss hat and a Pawn Boss mug. Now, when I was with Bruce Condello, he was sitting beside me two weeks ago, and while we were talking, he was on his phone sharing it to like 37 pages that he's an administrator of. Well, guess who got the hat from that drawing? Well, there wasn't even a drawing. I left the hat and the mug there for Bruce. So Bruce got it this last time. But we will have a drawing next week, and we can talk about it now. Next week, I don't know where I'm going to be. I haven't made up my mind. I've got to go out way out in far west Texas to uh, look at a lake site, which is kind of an oxymoron if you know much about west Texas, out between Midland, Odessa, and El Paso, kind of north of that point near the Guadalupe Mountains. But there's a guy out there that uh, wants to build a lake, and I'm going to run out there and see him. And haven't made up my mind. It's on Monday. Haven't made up my mind what I'm going to do with the rest of the week. So I might be broadcasting from New Mexico on Wednesday or somewhere. I don't know. I'll find a hole, and we will broadcast if, as long as there's an internet connection. Let's see here. I love I love to see the love fest going on between Jim Morgan and Frank Jones. Let's see. Here we go. Frank James. I'm not going to plug that boat because they're not advertisers. But uh, let's see what you're saying here. It's kind of big and clumsy and doesn't do well in shallow weeded areas. Would the twin troller work better for just one or two anglers? Absolutely will. The twin troller is an outstanding boat, and they they it, with one or two anglers in your in that wood. I know I know your wooded weedy shallow base. The twin troller not only will get in there, it'll get out. Because with those two motors, what's really cool about it, you're, you're driving it with your feet so it's hands-free. It's not like you're turning around with a tiller drive or trying to figure out what to do on a wristwatch. You're using your feet. So you're hands-free, which means you can either go in reverse, you can go forward, or you can push down and push back and spin in the 360-degree circle right there. So uh, let's see what Jim Liner says. Jim says, uh, Jim Morgan says, where's your old-fashioned, Bob? Well, Jim, I don't have one today. Now, Bruce and I had one last uh, two weeks ago when I was there, but uh, I'm not. I, I I have no excuse, no good reason, but I do want one, and I love the way you're thinking. So, uh, Jim Liner says I've hooked ten pound bass ten feet from my twin trailer. Now, what what Jim Liner's saying there is the stealth. So, with the twin trailer, you can sneak in, back up. You know, you can pivot, you can, it's, I, I was I was stunned at how mobile that boat is compared to all these other boats. So, Frank Jones says, we like to refer to the waters we love to fish as small and protected waters. And there are a number of great boats on the market that have their own merits. What makes the TTX-10 stand out is it's completely hands-free operation, zero turn. That's what, exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, uh, and you know, I got to tell you this. Frank doesn't advertise, but he should, and after today, he will. I, I promise. <laughs> Won't you, Frank? Hey, I'm listening. <whistles> yeah, okay. Well, I know. I tried to invite you. It didn't work. We'll figure it out. You'll be back on later. But uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, but he, he's right. I mean, I've never been on a small boat in small waters that is fluid and mobile as that one. But let me go back and tell you this. It is a boat to fish from. That's what it's for. Now, you can tool around the lake or the pond in it, enjoy it. It's not like a paddle boat because you're driving it, you know, but it, it does serve a mission, and it's, it's a perfect mission for you to go out and go fishing in your pond or lake. Now, oh, here's something else. Uh, help me with this, Frank. That boat, I think, is 12 feet long, weighs about 175 pounds, so it's really hard for one person to pick it up and slide it into the bed of a pickup. So I'd recommend a trailer for it for several reasons. Number one, it's easy to get in and out from a trailer. And secondly, it's easy and makes it more mobile because you'll want to take it out of the water and go store it. You don't want to leave it in the water. I don't think that's a good idea. You need to take it out and protect it just like you would pretty much any other boat. Now, if you want to leave it in the water and cover it, Frank can offer some advice. Type us up something here, uh, Frank. There's Chris Aguilar. He's on uh, hurricane watch duty down there in South LA, South Louisiana. Frank Jones, that's correct. Designed by fishermen for fishermen. So if you want to go fishing, that's the boat. Now, if you want to do something more for a pleasure boat, look at other boats. So let's see here. Um, 
Let me look here. Zach Russell, I apologize if, I, if I'm stepping on any toes, but for anyone with any disabilities, I know the many pontoon companies in Nebraska can do custom work to fit your needs. Okay, that's good to know. And uh, the the many pontoon companies, okay, you're, so you're kind of plugging both of them, Zach. That's awful noble of you. Pontini pontoon boats and hotwood pontoon boats. I'm glad to know they can custom make it, which is they can make it wider for better stability when you're walking on it. Let's see, I know because I took a bit of heat when I didn't get one for my epilepsy problem. Okay, family wanted me to be in, walled in a bit better than my bass boat. Okay, so Zach, Zach Russell, I've, I've gotten to know Zach. I love you, Zach. You and uh, your old buddy Jason over there, y'all probably knock each other out of the boat on purpose. But also, you know what? I got to... I want to say this. I'm going to switch gears. Wear a PFD. Do it. Wear a PFD. You're going out in a boat, wear a PFD. You know, you can, somebody give me a brand name. It's, it's escaping me at the moment. There's, there's, there's a couple of brands you can put on. They got a CO2 cartridge. And I'll never forget what Ray Scott told me when I was visiting with him. About the time I was looking at the pontoon boats, he, I mean at the uh, twin trawler boats, he uh, he said, Bob, and it, it, we'd been talking back and forth, fast and furious. I love talking to that guy. And uh, okay, I see what Frank said. I'm gonna come back to that here in just a minute. But um, Ray looked at me, and we went from this happy-go-lucky talking to a serious note. He says, Bob, and he leaned forward and he says, You know why people don't wear life jackets? And I said, well, Ray, tell me why people don't wear life jackets. He says, because they've never drowned. If they ever drown, they're going to wear a life jacket. So I kind of reeled back a little bit, and I hadn't thought of it from that perspective. So like what Zach's talking about, you guys, if, if and I've been ejected from an electric fishing boat two times in my 40 years, and both of them were my fault. One time... I turned the corner a little too hard, went under a tree, and a limb knocked me out. And I was holding on to that tree limb and got stung by 12 yellow jackets right next to it. So how smart was I? And I was in my early 20s, or mid-20s when that happened. Then in my 30s, I was doing the same thing. I made a hard turn, hit an underwater stump that I didn't see. The boat stopped, and I toppled over the side. And as I sunk to the bottom of that lake, probably in 15 feet of water, I thought, man, if I'd have hit my head, I, I, all I could think was, I got to get up. And I did. And so uh, uh, getting out of the water, getting back in the boat, and I didn't have on a life jacket. And if I'd have hit my head, somebody would have had to rescue me. And it would have been Walter. And he was in the boat, and all I could see was him stepping off the electricity switch so I didn't get electrocuted and watching me as I sunk. So I popped back in and climbed in the boat, went and loaded it on the trailer, and I never got in that electric fishing boat again. Matter of fact, we did away with it, and I bought a big, nice, professional, not a homemade John boat, electric fishing boat. I got a good electric fishing boat. So let's see here. Um, Chris Uvetta says, I got the current edition of the magazine. Bad for the home to-do list as I lost all night reading all the great articles. Man, I hate that you didn't get anything done, but you did. I mean, Chris, you know what? You you, you are one of the most ardent pond meisters out there, always creative thinking, you know, and, and you might chime in on what you think about different boats because you live on a 260-acre lake there at Innsbruck. So what kind of boats do you see there? I think you guys have got an all-electric rule as well. And if you and Chris, if you haven't looked at these twin trailer boats, you should. Let's see, uh, Zach Russell says, let's see, Frank Jones says the boat's 10 feet long. And about 175 pounds, 75 percent of the owners have trailers. So you know what? Tell me, tell us the price point too, Frank. And uh, th this boat, and you guys go to the website, look at some of the videos, so you can see. Do the same thing for uh, Pontini and Hotwoods, and also Ultra Skiff. You guys go look at these and do your homework, do your due diligence. That way, you can pick out the right boat. So. Uh, Zach Russell's got a Mustang Hydrostatic. All right, let's see here. Frank says over a third of his owners are in protected coastal or brackish water, so they like it in salt water too. That's good to know. <coughs> Jim Morgan says Ray is deep. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, Re is deep. As a matter of fact, you know what? When when that uh, uh, Jim, when I was at his place this that one particular time, a video crew showed up. Part of the reason we were talking about PFDs is that he was going to film a. It was Mustang. That was the name that he was representing at the time. He was repping for Mustang. They were writing him a check to to endorse their product. So he's standing on the dock in his cowboy hat. You know, and you know how Ray Scott dresses. Now he had on flip flops that day, which I didn't even pay any attention to. But he's standing on the dock. They shoot probably ten takes of a commercial for Mustang PFDs, and he's standing on the dock. And then in the very last take, he said, "Guys, because here's what happens." And he jumps off the dock backwards at probably age seventy three or seventy four. And he bobs to the surface within 10 seconds. That thing blew out, popped him right up to the top, supporting his head. And uh, that's just the kind of, that's just kind of the way he is. Let's see here. Um, yep, Frank Jones says that race God is full of great wisdom. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Bob, when you get a chance, please mention the Small Water Angler newsletter. Oh, you know what? That's a great idea. I'm glad Frank said that. Um, guys... Frank has started producing a small angler newsletter, which kind of comes at it from it's an e it's an e version. It's free. If you want one, uh, you can sign up for it on his website, and it comes out monthly. And uh, they've asked me to to su to supply a few articles, so I do. They've got an article of mine in there each issue, but it's it's geared up towards small waters, um, some how to tips on fishing, some how to tips on how to use the boats. How-to tips on pond management. You know, everything from, and I've read every one of them, they talk about angling techniques, you know, fishing in aquatic plants, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to sign up for that free e-newsletter, do like uh, Frank saying, go to their website and you can do that. Okay, so Christian Meta saying Innsbruck has an all-electric motor reel. It's a rule. It's nice for all sizes of our lakes. From a few acres to the biggest at 234 acres. Now, here's let me tell you about Chris Chavetta. Chris Chavetta is the president of the fishing committee at Innsbruck, which is a community of I don't know how many hundreds of homes, but I know this: they have over a hundred ponds and lakes on this several thousand acre development, and they've got several lakes that range in size from 100 to 234 acres. So what he's saying is uh, there's no noise, there's no water quality issues, nobody's spilling oil or gas on the water. He likes the Carolina Skiff kit boats because they're wide and have deep sides like a bathtub and white fiberglass is better in the summer heat. That's a, that's a good point. And then here's Bruce Condello checking in. Now Bruce has got a little pontoon boat and it comfortably seats two people, but we had three on there the other day. The thing about Bruce's pontoon boat is... uh uh. It's it's stable, good for two people. If you have one more person on there, it gets a little bit shaky, especially if they're big like me. But for what Bruce is doing, his pontoon boat, I think it's probably 10 feet long. Hey, Bruce, we're talking about boats. Why don't you chime in a little bit and uh, let everybody know what you're drinking tonight? And oh, by the way, uh, just a little quick aside, in, in this issue of Pond Boss, it talks about the Bob Lusk... Uh, Institute of Higher Pondology, and I'm really ready to promote that. Uh, and I've had four phone calls today from people that are wanting to sign up for it, but there it is right there. So what I'm wanting to do is uh, I've got two different sets of dates set up, one in October and one in uh, April of next year, where people can come, spend two and a half to three days with me and other guest speakers. And I'm really going to see if I can convince Bruce to come because Bruce needs to come. He really does. He's drinking water right now. Well, that's fair enough. We all have kidneys. You know, at least some of us do. <laughs> well, I have livers. At least some of us do. So anyway, um, I do want to promote that Institute of Higher Pondology. If you want to know more about it, call the office, 903-564-6144. Talk to Leanne, leave a message. I'll call you back and talk to you about it. Uh, but we're going to get really, really deep into the pond management um, techniques. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of theory, but a whole lot of hands-on. You'll get to be an electric fishing boat. You'll get to pull seines. You'll get to handle fish. I had a guy call me today, Dr. 
Schmidt from North uh, from New Orleans. He read about it. He's been a Palm Boss subscriber. He says, Bob, I have got 36 grandchildren, and I've got a pond in Mississippi, and I want to make that pond as good as it can, and I just don't know enough, and I'd really like to come and spend that time with you and your guest speakers and do these things and learn more about it. So sign me up. He says, I've got 36 grandkids. And I thought, I said, dude, man, I got 10. And I thought I had a lot. And I really wanted to ask him, do you know all their names? <laughs> but I'm sure he does because he spends a lot of time with them. They're scattered out all over the nation. And he is providing a place that his family and grandkids can all come and enjoy each other and, and have fun with the ponds. He's coming to the Institute of Higher Pondology, and he's 84 years old. 84. And he wants to know more about it. So we're going to go down deep into pond management. We're going to cut down into some of the finer things, the art and the science of pond management. So I'd love for some of you guys to sign up for that, and you guys know who you are. And it's expensive. It's 1500 bucks. But that's how much it costs to go to a Pond Boss conference without all the hands-on that you're going to get in this three days worth of stuff. There's Daniel Hendrick checking in. Frank Jones, our solo TTX-10 version is $3,295 fully equipped. Our most popular item is the Adventure Package. It's uh, the deluxe model boat, trailer, and 2.5, horsepower Honda motor. Okay, and I didn't know you had that for $5,595. Now, if you guys start pricing boats... You're going to see the low end of good boats are probably $2,000 all the way up to a tricked out bass boat, which is 70. Yeah. <clears throat> you can build a lake for that. So, um, you can see it's affordable. And uh, so kind of, kind of going back to how do you pick the right boat? Well, you really got to know the mission and how long do you want to keep it? You know, how serious are you about taking care of it? Uh, and, you know, I don't know that I can say a whole lot more about the twin trollers other than it's, it's perfect. Matter of fact, they're at Richmond Mill. I think if they had two or three of them, that they could change their business model some on how, on who can go out. You know, I love the business model they got. If you're going fishing at Richmond Mill, you're going with a guide and you're going in a Triton boat. You know, but at your lake, if you got a 30 acre lake or a four acre pond or a half acre pond, then the, the half acre pond is not designed for you to be able to fish from the shore all the way around. Twin trollers perfect. Jacob West says, Bob, my dad and I need to talk to you about your Institute of Higher Pondology. We may have a great idea to help and we want to go. Okay, well, you know what? I'll ring your number as soon as we wrap this thing up here in a few minutes. Scott McClurg, after watching a few of your old live, old, old live videos, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. I was hanging out with my preacher today, and uh, we, uh, we got a little puppy. Debbie's got a little um, Australian Labradoodle, and her name is Girlfriend, and I'm falling in love with that dead young dog. I can't help it. So we took her in to get her uh, final parvo shot today, and my preacher now lives in Clovis, New Mexico, Johnny Funderburg. And Johnny and I and, and Johnny's wife, Pam and Debbie, we went out to dinner last night. They stayed with us and, and needed to go get that dog shot. So we we took the dog in and uh, the the vet, he's, a, he's got a great sense of humor and he's kind of crusty. He's getting a little long in the tooth like all of us are. <clears throat> and Johnny came in and I said, hey, uh, Dr. Stuckey, I don't know if you remember Johnny Funderburg, but he was our pastor at First Baptist Church up until about 17 years ago, and he left. And Ray said, you know, I thought that's who you were. He said, Dad Gum, you're looking old. <laughs> I kind of wanted to say, well, hey, Ray Lynn, if you'll raise the wrinkles off your eyes, we can tell if you're kidding or not. You know, but after watching a few of your old live videos, I called up Landon Wyatt about my pond issues here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Got some products on the way I'm excited about. That's great. Uh, you know, one of the, one of my favorite things about the Pond Boss family is we've got people we trust coming at you from different angles to help you with all the different kinds of issues you might have with a pond. And what, what Scott's talking about is Landon Wyatt is a microbiologist, and uh, um, 
out of Wisconsin. They're in the uh, resource guide, Natural Lake Biosciences. And what, what I'm hearing Scott say with that post is that he, uh, <laughs> Jim Morgan making me laugh. And so what's going on is, is that Landon can help do custom blends of enzymes and microbes that you can use, especially in aerated ponds, to help expedite the process of breaking down um, um, organic matter. So Jim Morgan says, did, did Johnny baptize a girlfriend? <laughs> no, but I like where you're going. What are you drinking? Hey, are you having an old-fashioned? You need to be. I'm, I'm fixing to go home and do that, except I don't have any whiskey and I don't have any bar syrup. <laughs> Frank Jones, Richmond Mill is one of my top five fishing trips. Took my dad there for a 75th birthday trip. That's outstanding. You know, and, go, and, and when when we go spend time on the water, especially our own water, oh my gosh, it's it's memories. Debbie and I, we live at what we affectionately call Lusk, yeah, Morgan, Jim Morgan, yeah, he's drinking an old fashioned. Well, okay, well, I'd raise a toast, and I will later, of something. I don't know, it might be wine, I don't know. <clears throat> but uh, when we're spending time on our waters, it's almost sacred to me. Uh, I, I don't know how many children have caught their first fish at our swimming pond right beside the house, a mile from here. Where if you go to the Institute of Higher Pondology, you're going to be in that pond working fish, seining, sampling, having a big time. And it, I, it, just, it is so rewarding to watch a kid catch their first fish at two years of age or five years of age or 90 years of age, whatever, catch their first fish out of your pond. You know, and I just love that. So let's see here. Scott McClurg, Landon is helping me break that cycle. And you know what? Stay with Landon because he will. And that's one of the things I love, you know, the, about Natural Lake Biosciences <coughs> is that is he will work with you, water sample. He'll he'll check what you've got living in it. You know, they'll check your um, what's in your soils, your pond muck, and then custom design the right blends to help cleanse your water. Now, you know, for you guys in the northern part of the country, John Funk and uh, everybody else that's up that part of the country, one of your biggest issues, and listen to me, and this is the same in Nebraska, one of your biggest issues is water quality. And right now, you need to be doing the things to cleanse your water. The cleaner you can get your water going into ice up, the greater your odds of coming out of winter without a winter kill are. So it's all about that water. And if you will do that and do like what Scott's doing, and I don't know how much money Scott's going to spend. He might be spending 500 bucks. I don't know. But when you start spending some money and it seems like it's a little high, you got to ask yourself, well, I'm buying an insurance policy that's going to help me reduce the risk of a problem that's going to kill five years worth of fish that are worth how much? First of all, how much is that five years worth? And then how much are the fish worth? I guarantee you the five years is worth more than the fish. But the fish have great value too because they're yours. You've nurtured them. Heck, you've, if you're like my wife, you've named some of them. So uh, let's, uh, I think I've kind of worn out my welcome on boats. Um, I have had John boats, bass boats. I had a house boat. I had, um, I've had a twin trawler. I've had electric fishing boats. And for small waters, if, if you're going to pin me down to a boat to fish from, I'd pick the twin trawler. You know, now, I have to be honest, I haven't spent any time on a pontini or a hot woods boat. And I'd like to try those out. I've seen them, but I've not spent time on them. But I tell you what, I do really like how honest these guys are and how they'll do some custom. I didn't know they could do some custom things until Zach just said that, but I love that. Frank says, can you talk a little bit about mill ponds? They're some of the best small waters in my area, but I typically don't hear much about their management. <coughs> well, what Frank's talking about, he lives in Eastern North Carolina and in the sand hills, there's a lot of water rolling down and it's all black water. It's all um, looks like iced tea. You know, it's that dark tannic look and it all comes from tannic acid out of pine forests that are growing in sand. Bruce said put in too much grenadine so so Bruce just mixed him up. 
his kind of old fashioned. <laughs> okay, so Bruce's boat is a Hot Woods. Okay, so I've been, I have been on a Hot Woods boat. I'm real comfortable with two people on it. I was less comfortable with me on it with Bruce and his dad a couple weeks ago. But I knew not to move around a lot. Because if I moved and I sat in the middle in a comfortable chair, if I moved much, that boat was going to waver some. So we were real careful, but we knew what we were doing. None of us fell out. So I guess that means that we knew what we were doing. So um, let's see. So, hey, Jim Morgan, Bruce, 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 Jim's telling you that you got to add more makers. <laughs> That'll dilute your grenadine. All right. This is funny. This is so fun. Kevin Aronson says, our pond is a domestic... Oh, wait, wait. I got to go back to what Frank asked. Okay, so managing mill ponds. Here's the, here's the thing about mill ponds. They always have low pH, 5.2 to 5.8 typically. So their pH is really low. And they're mill ponds because they flow a lot. And they were able to, to turn, a, a, a turn a grist mill or turn a water wheel or turn a generator or whatever. <clears throat> so they're typically flowing a lot of water. And that means they're pretty pretty um, predictable. They're predictably low in pH. They're predictably low alkalinity. They're predictably low hardness. And they're predictably you can't do anything about it. So how do you manage those waters? That means their productivity is very, very low. But their predictability is very high. So what we did at Richmond Mill was we created a uh, feeding program. Got Purina Mills to manufacture better feed back in 2005, 6, 7 which they did, which is now the Aquamax products, which by the way, Purina helped sponsor this show. And they've got outstanding feed products. And part of that, part of their research was done at Richmond Mill Lake. Here you got Jim Morgan, Frank Jones, uh, um, Bruce condello has been there many times. I've been there a lot. Uh, so that was pretty damn good right there. So <clears throat> what we did there, if you really want to manage a mill pond that's flowing that kind of water, know your water chemistry because that's going to be your limiting factor. So with Richmond Mill Lake at Kingfisher Society, we mitigated the poor quality of the water and capitalized on the predictability and stability of the water by feeding the fish. Now what that extrapolates out into is a pretty expensive feed bill, especially if you've got a big lake like that. But the consequences are you go from a really low, poor quality fishery to an outstanding high quality fishery. So there you go. Let's see, uh, what, let's see, what does Leroy, Leroy Mitchell's got tracker boats with Ray motors on the back. So that's a 120 acre lake in East Texas. And they have got uh, the same Ray motors that Jim Morgan's got. Now the tracker boats aren't as heavy as the Triton boats that are at Richmond Mill Lake. So they're a little bit more agile, but the what, one thing I like about the um, Triton boats is they sit lower in the water. So you're actually down closer to the water. So when you bend over to, catch, to pick a full of fish out of the water, it's not the same distance as you, when you're leaning over a, an aluminum tracker boat. And that, that might make a difference, it might not. Let's see, Frank Jones, what's the Hot Woods website? I don't know. It's, if, if you guys will go to the uh, uh, pondboss.com website and go find the resource guide, you'll find Hot Woods, you'll find Pontini, and you'll find Ultra Skiff, and you can see more about those. And they're, uh, they're made in, uh, the Hot Woods is made in Nebraska, which that makes pretty good sense why Bruce would have one. Hot Woods has several larger versions, okay? Kevin Arneson, sa Arneson says, our pond is domestic water supply. We keep from putting any chemicals in it, not knowing how it might hurt us. That's pretty smart. You know, it, it's, it doesn't make sense to go in now. Uh, however, Kelly Duffy, I noticed Kelly Duffy was on earlier. If he's still on now, Kelly is, he is our go-to expert about all things chemistry, chemicals, materials, and aquatic plants. So he, he gets to deal with um, water supply lakes. He gets to work with entities that have, don't have any choice but to treat vegetation. So there are products out there that are labeled for use and that are safe. They're contact killers that have a very, very short half-life. But... I would be leaning on it on somebody like Kelly Duffy to tell us about that. Kelly works with Helena, by the way. Let's see here. Um, let's see. Pontini's located in Elm Creek, Nebraska. Hot Woods is in Grand Island. All right. I see Jennifer Ardwan. Her husband must be working today. All right. Let's see here. <laughs> I love these outside conversations going on. <clears throat> so, 
um, I know that uh, uh, that you guys have got more questions. We're going to go for about another seven or eight minutes. And just let me kind of just drill back in and hit the high points of choosing a boat. First of all, define why you want a boat. Do you want a fishing boat? Do you want a pleasure boat? Do you want a boat that's got specific purposes? Do you want to get up and down the lake fast? Do you want to be stealthy? Then the thing is, you know, back, back when I was growing up, you had John boats and you had pleasure boats. That was it. You know, in 1968, 69, that's when they first started making fiberglass boats back then. You know, and, uh, I mean, that was about the time Ray Scott was starting BASS. And just, you know, go back and look at some of the old pictures and you see all kinds of flat bottom John boats, v hole boats, metal boats. Most of them were metal, but then some of the fiberglass boats started showing up. So now, I mean, you can go, if you go to a Bass Pro Shops or uh, to an academy or, or, you know, some of the local marine places, there's one up the road here called Blackbeard, and drive through there and look at the boats, it'll make your head spin because there's so many different choices. But the choices boil down to how do you want to use it? Do you want it to be really mobile? Do you want it to be heavy duty? Do you want to fish from it? Do you want to ski behind it? You know, and so then you start drilling down into the choices you've got. Of course, since we're talking about small waters, you've got basically pontoon boats that you can choose from. You've got John boats that you can choose from. You've got smaller bass boats you can choose from. You've got little paddle boats, kayaks, canoes, and then you got the twin troller. And the twin troller is unique. You know, once you look at that and you, you, you see the videos and see how it works, it's very intriguing for small waters if you want to fish. So, getting down into the nitty gritty of this, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, figure out why you want the boat, think it through, shop, do your due diligence. Holy cow, I mean, back in the day before Al Gore invented the internet, you know, you had to go to the library, you had to talk to other people, you had to make phone calls to figure out what you wanted, to figure out the choices you had. You know, I love, I love Frank asking, where's the Hot Woods website and where are they made? You know, so because of this show, Frank's going to go look at some of his competition, and I hope you get to know them because they're good people. So now, let's see, Dick Taver says, I got a 10-foot pontoon boat, good for two people. Three people would be pushing it. That's exactly what's going on with, uh, with Bruce's boat. Yep. Um, oh, boy, here goes Jim Morgan again. I love you, Jim Morgan. Frank Jones, thanks for inviting me to be a guest this week. Hey, we couldn't work out the technical issues. Let's stay. Yeah, we will stay in touch, man. Because uh, I hope that you get some input. You guys that are watching the show, if you don't mind, uh, get in touch with Frank. If you want to put your phone number up there, Frank, do it. Here comes David Schneiderman with Easy Docs. Don't forget to consider where the boat will stay when you're not when it's not in use. Some boats are buckets when they're stored on the pond. That's exactly right. Now, one of the things about I can tell you this about the twin troller. It's got a little plug back there. You can pull the plug and it sits above water level. So when it rains on it, the water will flow out the back. But if you leave it out in the weather, it's going to deteriorate. Every boat's going to do that. Even a metal boat's going to deteriorate. So David is saying, hey, what, like what David is saying is a John boat has got the plug below water level. So when it rains, you know what? In my house right now, we've got a canoe that was sitting on top of the swimming pond levee, the dam, and a storm toppled it, rolled it. We had it upside down. It rolled it down the back side of the dam. It's sitting in the bushes right side up. Now it's full of water. I can't pick it up. It's going to take three of us to turn the dadgum thing over and get the water out of it because it's holding water, which that's a good thing. We want canoes to not have water when we're floating in them. And the kids love it. Yeah, and, oh, here's Scott McClurg just made a great point. And, and actually, that canoe uh, was just full of water. I had to put chlorine in it because mosquitoes were, larvae were growing in it. And now if I, it, it rained on us again today, put more water in it. And if, if I can't get some help over here over the weekend, I'm going to go down there with my tractor with forks on the front, tilt that dead gum canoe over so it can pour the water out and we can drag it back up where it belongs. So, Zach Russell says, um, have you ever taken your boats to a boat expo by chance? It's a great experience if you haven't. Good effort. Actually, that's how I met Frank Jones in, per in person. I met Frank Jones, and I think it was probably in Greenville, South Carolina at the Bassmasters Club.